Hi, my name is Stephen Wright, and I feel anxious about being Conan O'Brien's friend. It's the most honest way anyone has opened this Ironically, podcast. Ironically, it's not honest, but I thought it would sound... <laughs> <laughs> I, thought it, I thought it would sound weird. You have one of the most iconic voices in comedy, and I'm not even talking about your perspective, which is iconic, but just... When you talking um, is such a delight to me. Oh. Every time I've had the chance to interview you, I think my heart beats maybe 200 beats a minute, and I think yours beats during leap years. <laughs> 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 Once. And I've always loved the contrast. When I get to talk to Stephen Wright, uh, I'm... <laughs> You know, a Tasmanian devil, and you are um, a moon rock that's seen it all. It's really beautiful. A moon rock that's seen it all. Yeah, yeah, you have. <laughs> well, you know, uh, I'm lucky I sound like this because obviously I'm not doing this. This is how I sound, and it's contributed to my whole career by complete accident. Yeah. I mean, this is just accident. But I'm not. Even though I sound like this and I appear to be so laid back, I'm not as laid back as you might think I am. I'm not like you. I'm not like, like, you know, yeah. I'm like, like, <laughs> you know, like, like on, you know, I'm, but, but my mind is I'm going. Glad you didn't finish that. Because <laughs> um, that all wasn't, the, that all wasn't the ends be... of that sentence is I said no, no, no. no. <laughs> on, one of, <laughs> so, so. on one of my first jobs, a writer named Steve Barker, who was from the Deep South. He looked at me one day and he used to drink like whiskey out of his desk and he just took a long sip of whiskey and he went, one day, O'Brien, you're going to blow and you're going to leave a nasty stain. <laughs> he, and I was like 22, but bouncing off the walls. But anyway, you said you're not as laid back as one might think you are. What my are you mind about? is going faster than, than my being mm -hmm. to the outside world. Like I can, I exercise every day. I'm an exercise bike or a real bike. I can get off the bike, get a phone call and hello. Oh, did you just wake up? Right. You know, I just and got you off were just the working 40 out. minutes on the bike. <laughs> right. So now, I can't imagine. But I'm not you... like, I can tell you are, what, you know, you're a tight, if we were made, if we, me and you were made out of bamboo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I think about this all the time. Okay, let's continue that. If you and I were made of bamboo. Bamboo poles, mm -hmm. like 20, each person had was 20 to make a person. Yep. And they, they have to wrap them around to hold them together. Yeah. Y yours are wrapped tighter yes. than mine. Uh, so mine, mine are looser. Yours rattle a bit when you shake them. Yes. And mine yes, feels yes. like one solid. Yes. I'm basically, there's so, it's wrapped so tightly, I'm like a steel pole. Yes. They use, you, <laughs> they use your version to drill for oil. Yes. <laughs> I've always thought, I've always seen you like Can that. I tell you, Stephen, if I've heard this, <laughs> can I just say, if I've heard this once, I've heard it a thousand times. I have so many people in my life that said like, do you have a second when I'm in the street? <laughs> if you and I were bamboo, you're wrapped so tightly they'd use you to drill for oil. And I go, I know, I know. And Steven, I finished their sentence. I go, I know, and you drill for oil. All the time. Oh my God. Um, I'm gonna embarrass you really quickly and then we can move on because you're not gonna like this, but... Uh, I am hard pressed to think of anybody who tickled my mind more when I was very young and just interested in, I mean, you know, early 1980s, I'm 18, 19, and uh, you explode on the scene. And I, it was such a revelation to me that somebody could be so funny and so smart in such an original way it was very inspiring to me and to, I mean, tens of thousands of people, not just from my generation, but generations going on. And I don't know if you're aware, I know you're a very humble guy, but I don't know if you're aware how much you changed things. I hear about that I've influenced people. I've seen younger people uh, that I can tell are influenced people by me, but that's very nice of you to say that. Very nice. And I feel very lucky because I didn't, 
like I'm this is how I think, that's how I write, this is how I speak. And it just it just fell together. You know, mm -hmm. there was no plan. Right. If I do it like this, like this, then I'll be this different guy. It was like go to the open mic night and think, okay, I'm gonna go back in two weeks. Watch the open mic. I'm gonna go back in two weeks. I wrote stuff. I had never written anything, so I wrote it during the two weeks and I came back. And then I was saying it, like, I mean, a lot, half of it didn't work, but the distinctness is completely, it's like by accident. It's like a fingerprint. Like your brain has a finger, everyone's brain has a fingerprint. And I'm so lucky that the thoughts and the way I speak went together. And I'm also lucky that, that it clicked with the audience because I don't, wouldn't have another way to do it. Right. Right. But thank you. Thank you very much well, for the I, compliment. I, well, I just, Another thing is when you're doing it, you're not thinking of a young kid watching it. You're right. just trying to make the audience laugh. Yes. You're trying to do a good TV appearance. You're not right. thinking of, you know, 14-year-old people. You're not thinking No, of that. course not. I mean, if you are, there'd be something wrong with you if you're... <laughs> <laughs> if every time you performed, you were thinking of a 14-year-old boy, <laughs> Stephen, that would be a real problem. Are there any boys out there watching? Oh hey, God. take it easy, Stephen. Any little boys watching? <laughs> oh, I'm going to be arrested, and I, yeah, didn't, I yeah. didn't even say it. I didn't even say it. No, you kind of did say it. <laughs> and that hat you're wearing is real skeevy. Um, just saying. Is it, is it, is it, the hat goes with the say, whole thing. It, does, it say, does it say that? You does know, it say that? <laughs> here, okay, That's here's hilarious. Here, here's the thing I want to zoom in on. What I want to zoom in on that's important to me is that yes, your brain is different and you have this way of seeing things and you come along at this certain time. The hard part is when you get up <clears throat> and you're in the clubs, there is a very powerful, powerful, powerful force that makes people want to conform because there's a way to be that's a little safer if you're in front of an audience. And you clearly, whether you want to acknowledge it or not, are brave because you got up, this is the way you were going to do it. And I'm sure there were audiences that didn't know what the hell is going on initially, but you kept going. You see what I'm saying? Yes. That's the part that's not a complete accident because you didn't say, you know, it works. It works when you get up and go, hey, hello, Boston. And then you'll have a joke you know, and then I do some stuff for local local humor and I kind of joke about the socks and I get them on my side and then I'll try and go into this stuff. You knew that, no, that's not, that we're not doing that. Well, I didn't think of it to not do it. I didn't even think, well, I'm not going to do that. Mm -hmm. It just came out like it, like it happened. It's just so, but I made up rules. I had these four rules that I wouldn't do. That was on purpose to not to stay like a little separated. What were the, I, can you tell I, us the I, rules? No. <laughs> do you want to tell you my rules? Yes. I have, ten, I, I have 10 of them. I have 10 of them. You have 10 of them. Yeah, thou shalt not kill. <laughs> thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. Um, and maybe you should think about my 10 rules. Yeah, your rules are much more yeah. known than mine. <laughs> I love if your rules are just about comedy, but you're a sociopath about everything else. It's hilarious. What the fuck are you doing? I, just... I, I was going to say, when you said thou shall not kill, I don't have that. I don't... <laughs> you come in, your hands are all dirty. There's a, there's a shovel in the back of your car. Very strict rules about non-topical comedy. Very strict. Hey, what happened to that lady? Don't ask. <laughs> Oh my God.